Welcome to the Ultimate Pool Preview Show, where we're going to be talking about what we've got coming up this weekend at the Hilton Metropole in Birmingham for Pro Series 3 and 4. We've got two Challenger events and we've got a women's event as well. Joining me for this to try and unpick what's going to happen, I've got Scott Ryan from the Ultimate Pool Podcast and I've got the winners of the first two Pro Series events, Mick Hill and Chris Melling. Well, this weekend is going to be a first really for Ultimate Pool because the whole weekend is going to be on subscription only. It's on the Ultimate Pool t ultimatepool.tv. You can go to that website and then you can subscribe from there. For $6.99, you get to see all the matches all weekend long. And we've got plenty of content coming along the way as well. And as well as this weekend, there's lots more content behind that as well. So there's lots to subscribe for, lots to enjoy and watch there. But let's turn our attention to this weekend, guys. And uh, before we talk about this weekend, let's just touch back on, on what, how you guys went in last weekend. Mick, it was your first title here with Ultimate Pool. Relieved, happy, pleased with the way you played and to get that hands on that trophy? Yeah, no, it was good. It was um, it was a really odd weekend. Obviously, I was ill. You know, most most people that, that, that know me really well know that it, you know, I was genuinely ill and, and I was like basically just sleeping between matches and kind of, it was really strange. Um, but during the matches, I was quite calm and quite sort of laid back. Maybe that kind of helped you know the whole sort of thing really the fact of, of not kind of feeling great but expectations was lowered and you know, I played really well and you know played with Neil Raybon in the final obviously we've grown up together kind of thing a bit older than Neil but known him a long time and and got the win so yeah pleased and a big crowd for it as well which was really enjoyable you were there Scott as well the, the atmosphere out for that final was amazing goosebump yeah goosebumps all through all through and uh, you know for Mick it was a pro Mick crowd I think that that's safe to say the atmosphere on the Saturday evening is the best experience I've had in terms of uh, a pool crowd. Um, fantastic, great to see Mick back in back in form. Um, and the golden era, I think we can say, we thought that perhaps this new generation of player didn't care for the golden generation and kind of the way they played, but the golden era is back with a bang already. Well, yeah, especially because, Chris, you managed to get your hands on, on Pro Series 2. Not only that, you played Gaz in the final, but that was a seriously enjoyable final to commentate on. What was it like to play in? Yeah, brilliant. Any time you play somebody like Gareth or Mick or, you know, the old, the old guys, if we can call them that now, you know, because we've been around for probably 30-odd years. So uh, to play him and to win, it's, uh, it's great because obviously we're getting to that age now where we might not get to too many finals or we might not perform as often, as, as good as often. But, you know, to win, a, to win a tournament against anybody is great, but to do it against Gareth was special. And do you feel, we, we talk about it a lot, don't we, Scott, but the, the, the sort of golden generation versus the, the up-and-coming stars at the moment, do you kind of feel that as players? Do you feel a, almost a collective amongst you guys that you're kind of you're battling back as well from what happened last year? Yeah, a little bit, because obviously people start talking on social media about, oh, the, you know, these guys were the best in the, the golden era and, you know, the, the late 90s, early 2000s, but... You're a brave person to write off Mikhail Gareth Potts and myself. Yeah, that, that's for sure. <laughs> well, it'll be interesting to see how you guys go on this weekend. We're going we're gonna to keep banging on about the generational battle. But let's take a look at what we have got coming up this weekend. And the first matches we got tomorrow afternoon, which is going to be in Pro Series 3 on the TV table. We're going to start off with the number one player for this year, Shane Thompson versus McCarthy or Leary. And then we've got Phil Harrison versus Warren or Chilton. And then Gareth Potts versus Cousins or Cunningham. Chris, you'll be playing the winner of Josh Kane and Simon Fitzsimmons, and then Mick, you'll be playing the winner of Gio Edgar and Neil Raybone. So that's a pretty tasty lineup for uh, our opening day's play. Pretty tough, yeah. Obviously, there's a lot of good matches there, a lot of a lot of tight ones. It's hard to call some of them. And uh, I mean, my match against either, I think it's uh, Josh or Fitzsimmons. It's uh, it's a tough one to call that. And obviously, I don't really mind who I play because obviously I'm going to be playing one of them. But no matter what happens, it's uh, it's going to be a tough match. And I'm guessing you'll say the same, uh, Mick, for your... No, I think what's interesting, though, is, you know, aside from who we're playing and whatever else, is that the way the kind of matchups have set up is is very much in, in tune with that next-gen, new-gen generation yeah, type of matches. If you look at the, the top match, you've got Shane Thompson, obviously, who had a great season playing Ronan McCarthy or Dylan. Then, you know, you're talking about Gareth Potts playing against uh, Emma Cunningham or, or Tom Cousins, so that falls in line again. Uh, Fitzy and uh, and Josh Kane, the winner of that playing Chris. Right on, right uh, on it, isn't Myself it? against um, is it uh, Geo Edgar or Neil Raybone fits fit, fits that again. And I suppose the the one that could go either way is it could be Phil Harrison versus Rob Warren, which w would stay in tune. Or if uh, 
my old pal Rob Chilton sort of get, 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 gets his, his game back together there. We know we can play. It might be a battle of the the old gen, old gen again, do you know what I mean? But you know, it's sort of set up nice and the draw kind of lends itself to this theme that we seem to be on. I know, Scott, you, you, you're a big fan of this theme, aren't you, at the moment, this uh, generation thing? And I think we're at a, I think kind of where I come from with this is we're at a point now where for many years, you guys who kind of dominated that golden era would turn up to matches in people's heads, 3-0 up already before a ball was hit. Whereas this younger generation of player, they don't fear you anymore. And I think that that's kind of what makes it an interesting concept. You guys had to respond, which you have done, especially yourself, Mick. I know that that was kind of, you spoke to me it, 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 candidly and said, if you could retire, if you were going to retire now, you could do it quite comfortably. But it was great to see the fire back in your belly at the last event. Now it's up for the Shane Thompsons, the Declan Brennans to respond. And I think, we, I think we've got a chance of seeing that this weekend. Yeah, and I guess we should touch on if we're going to look at this section of the draw and actually say that there's a potential match up there between Gareth Potts and Tom Cousins. Now, Tom does need to get past Emma Cunningham and Emma's a fantastic player, but there's no and doubt... it looks like she's got the fire back in her belly. She's definitely starting to play some better ball, that's absolutely for sure. It's been, I think it's been tough for her. She's already going outside her comfort zone. She didn't need to do it, but the fact that she is really pushing herself, I think, is, is fantastic. And I hope she plays really, really well. But if it, if it was to go the other way and Tom was to get through, what a match-up for a, essentially a first-round match because it's a prelim between uh, Emma and Tom. It, the potential for a, a nightmare draw for Gareth if Tom can successfully negotiate a, a game a, the game against Emma. Um, it, it, that sort of game is the sort of dream match-up that you kind of live for as a pool fan. Um, and, you know, it's a flippant match, isn't it? You, couldn't, you would really struggle to pick a winner between them. It's two. tough to call, but... As a, as a top seed, and Gareth was he ranked three, I think, is it difficult to be that seed and actually get given a draw potentially like Tom? Um, I, th I think at the moment, and I, I did say this um, two or three months back, you know, when we, was, when we was in the studio, I think the ultimate pool rankings are, are, are yet to really find themselves definitively. And um, you are getting draws thrown up that possibly are deemed to be kind of not quite right if that makes sense and obviously that could potentially be one be, be, be one of those and I think um, something else that I alluded to as well was I think the beginning of last season a lot of the people a lot of the guys and that was involved in the in the lockdown matches and everything and and, and, and all these challenges we hit the ground running and yeah. we, were, we, we were way behind we were way behind because we hadn't wasn't our thing or we hadn't done it and we were finding our feet and so I think what's going to happen is I think in time maybe at the end of this season I think you're going to get more of an idea of a, what I would deem to say a true ranking reflection so make the most of these matches now as kind of as first round matches because even though it's always going to be competitive when new professionals come in or whatever else it's highly unlikely you're going to see Gareth Potts versus potentially Tom Cousins again first round anytime soon because they're I think without doubt two top 16 players most people have them as two top eight players yeah, if so. nothing else which one of the two players if it does pan out that week that way has the tougher draw which one of them can meant you know because tom knows he's going to get a tough draw whereas gareth could get an easier draw yeah you'd have to feel that gareth will be more would be more gutted really to draw tom because like you say tom knows he's going to get a tough draw where you'd expect gareth to get kind of not an easy draw but you know somebody who may give you a few more chances where tom breaks as good as gareth breaks Harry's patterns as good as gareth I'm not quite sure, but he certainly plays like a top eight player. Yeah, well, of course, Tom actually has to get himself through to that match. We can talk about it, but he has got to get past Emma Cunningham first. And in that little section of the draw, 10 world titles. So it's a pretty special uh, section of the draw. Let's turn our attention to uh, table one, because there are three tables being streamed this weekend. And we're going to have Chipperfield versus Pursue or Day, and then Dempsey versus Eton Lees or Shepherd, Brennan versus Halcrow or Bale, Lambert versus Sullivan or Rowe. Gillespie versus Church or Waddingham. Scott, which matches there stand out to you? I'm looking forward to seeing Scott Gillespie this weekend. He's just recently won an event in Scotland. He looks serious. It, it, you know, he will say by his own admission that maybe he didn't put the hours in last season. Scott Gillespie is a world-class talent. You don't win the you don't win in the Supreme Series unless you're a world-class champ uh, world-class talent. I'm really excited to see 
what Scott Gillespie turns up this weekend. And of course he is still the current BI World Champion as well until that gets uh, played later on this year. Uh, what matches stand out to you guys? Um, I, I like, I, I'm, I'm liking maybe one of the players that hasn't really found the game yet to really kind of come to the forefront, you know what I mean? The, we talk about the strength in depth um, on the Pro Series and, and, and I think one or two players are still yet to kind of really get comfortable. If you like, um, I, I like the, um, the the Danny and Lee Shep Shepherd match. Yeah, that um, yeah looks good. That one very very fast paced, very attacking. Yeah, That'd be great I, to watch. I know Dan, you know fairly well on a, on a personal level, and um, you know he, he, he plays at the Darlaston Club in, in in Wolverhampton, and you know he's a hand he's a handful for Sheppy. I mean I appreciate that people would 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 see Sheppy as potentially starting our favourite, but Danny's a real a, a real handful. And a winner uh, of that will then play Stevie Dempsey, which we'll get to see on the stream tomorrow afternoon. Yeah. And Stevie being the Grand Slam champion should be a great match. Yeah, no, 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 a nice little intriguing kind of section, that one for me, that. Yeah, definitely. A few, Chris? Yeah, I've got to agree with Mick there. I think it's a tough one to pick there. Obviously, both attacking players and we know, can, we know what Shepard can do is yeah. uh, is lightning quick and he can win a match in 20 minutes and he's, he did it against me. Well, we saw it, didn't we? That afternoon that we saw at the uh, at Christmas time where he's, he was 6-1 down to you, Mick. Don't want to bring up bad news, but 6-1 down to you, manages to beat you in a six-red shootout and then managed to beat you 7-1 in 14 minutes or something absolutely silly. It was one of the craziest 25 minutes of Paul I've ever seen. Yeah, he's a very special player, is, uh, Jordan, but... But he's, uh, you know, Dan's a, a brilliant player. He's yeah. coming under the radar a little bit, I think, and I rate him very highly. And I think he's certainly one to watch out for. Yeah, I've been very, very impressed with Dan every single time I, I see him play, and he's got a lot of confidence in the way he plays as well. Dare I say it, Simon? Yeah. And I'm going to be slightly controversial here. Jordan Shepherd has kind of gone off the boil a little bit since winning the Pro Cup. You know, he's first foray into a big ultimate pool event. He's gone and he's won the tournament. Since then, he struggled a little bit. By his own high standards, by his, but we are talking about just a, a, a small sample size, only a couple of events, and in, you, know, you guys can say it's a tough place. You don't actually have to do a lot wrong to lose matches, so it doesn't necessarily. Well, we'll see whether he does turn up this weekend. It, it is maybe something to keep an eye on, but I'm for sure. Let's take a look at the third stream table this weekend, and this number two seed will start off the stream table two, and it's Sean Story versus Gilbert or White, and then Davies takes on Dad or McNamara. Let's take a moment to talk about McNamara. Of course, yeah. Monday we, we, night. We, yeah, I mean, <laughs> come on. I'd love to hear two of, two of, two of my favourite players' views on the shot he's played on Monday night into the middle pocket. Yeah, well, the, the shot he's played is a, an unbelievable shot. And not only an unbelievable shot, you need the vision to play it. And believe it or not, I actually saw the shot. When, when he played oh, I believe the shot. it. <laughs> when he played the shot before, I did actually see it because really it was the only way he could pot the ball and get on the eight yeah. ball. But you could play that shot probably a hundred times, mm. and he might make it two or three. Intriguingly, I'm pretty sure that uh, that Dad and McNamara have already drawn each other a couple of times this season. Yeah, I'm sure there was a match where uh, our fan and, and 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 Dave was due. The winner was due to play yourself, was they? And I think McNamara won eight seven. But I think they've I think they've played they've definitely played once this season. I, I'm not sure they haven't already played twice. So, you know, they, they, they're going at it again. Um, and 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 I was alluding to this. It, it, it's amazing how many times, like the same players tend to be tend to be playing each other. It, it, it's it, it's it's crazy, really. Well, if it's potential in, in your section of the draw, you could potentially be playing Neil Rayburn for what the third or fourth time with Ultimate Pool. Uh, but the fourth, but the fourth time in what? How many events we played? Well, Ten, twelve. Yeah. Yeah, um, it's amazing, and it's interesting to see how these these little developments will continue over the course of the next year or two. Because we are going to see, you know, this year we've got what well, we've got forty eight professionals. Next year we're going to have eighty professionals. We are going to see a lot of people playing each other multiple times. So it's going to be interesting to see how those head to head start to pan out. Can somebody get a hold over over their uh, opponents? Is, is that something that does happen? Do you do you kind of sometimes you just like a bogey player here, or you know you've got a little bit of a hold over someone? Certainly, I think it happens in all sports. I mean, Mick will tell you for probably 10 years, he had a, a, an old over me, really. I just couldn't beat him. Um, I did beat him now and again, but, you know, consistency-wise, I just I could get close to him. But for mm. some reason, I just never could beat him. I think as well, Chris, you know yourself, I think sometimes and it's also as what stage of the events do you play certain yeah. players? Like, kind of, you know, there's certain players that, may do well against you in the early stages of tournaments but 
a lot of the time like the the regular winners of events kind of show up for, for for semis and finals so that kind of player that may really really kind of turn you over in the first round maybe the occasion may mean that they a slightly bigger underdog you know if it's in a final for example so i think sometimes you've got to appreciate at what stage of the event are these players beating you and what stage of the event are, are you beating them as well i think is is a really good point um you know as you said i mean i mean looking i mean Sean Story, you know, he, he had he had a he had a really good season last year, and you know, kind of hasn't he's done okay this year. You know, he got to the semis of the Grand Slam and, and he lost to Waddingham, and he's kind of I think you beat him at, at the last event, in, and you played unbelievable. But he'd be looking, I think, to kind of try and kick on a little bit more like he was last year. Um, it's one of the big storylines for me for the whole year is how can Sean Story and Shane Thompson back up what they did last year? Can they continue and, and start keep themselves going forward or is it going to be hard to sort of match what they did last year? Well, I mean, if, if, if you're certainly asking me that question, I, 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 again, I really do truly believe and, and nothing taking nothing away from these guys at all because they had fantastic seasons. I do think one or two of the other players have bedded in a little bit and um, it could happen. But I don't see that that kind of level of um, dominance or regularity in terms of like, you know, I think if you talk about Chris or you talk about Gareth or, you know, Phil Harrison's going to come good eventually. Gillespie's going to be coming good. You know, you'd have to think Chilton's going to start to come good. There's going to be like certain players that haven't settled yet that it's just inevitable that come good. So it's in no you know, direct way towards a Shane or a Declan or a Sean Story, any of those guys, but the other guys are going to be a little bit more competitive and a bit more... So it's going more... to be harder for them to do... Well, uh, yeah, you know... because the, 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 the class of the players I've just mentioned there are, are, aren't just going to keep turning up and not being ready. You know, they're going, to be, they're, go they're going to be ready a lot more, I think, this season because they're just more tuned in. Yeah, no, it's hard to disagree with that one. Just to look at the rest of that section of the draw as well, so you'll see this on stream table two. We've got Greg Batten will take on Barker or De Bono. Cooney, Dom Cooney will take on Carl Sutton, and then Jimmy Croxton takes on Hitem Patel right on the uh, yesterday afternoon. So it's a really good stream table to uh, watch as well. You can watch all three stream tables. You can mix and match, pick whichever one you want, or you could have all of them going at the same time, which isn't a bad way to go. And then in the evening tomorrow, we will see the last 16s and the quarterfinals. So there is a lot going on in the evening as well. And we were there for the last weekend. The atmosphere out there was fantastic, wasn't it, Scott? And it's interesting, uh, the atmosphere, because actually, as you've rightly identified, we had, and let's be honest, on paper, some unexpected winners at Ultimate Pool events last season. So they were, you know, they were played in Players Club, which now we're out into the tour events and we're seeing big crowds. Is that the leveller for your golden era where they're used to playing in front of these crowds and your newer generation of player who perhaps aren't? Yeah, I mean, it, it is gonna be fantastic to see how, how this unfolds throughout the rest of the years. All these storylines that really excite me and um, get me really look, looking forward to, to watching and, and enjoying the game. Yes, yeah, so all the action there, 6 99 on ultimatepool.tv and the action will continue into Saturday. Saturday night we'll be focusing on Pro Series 3 semis and final, but in the afternoon we'll turn our attention to Pro Series 2 and we won't th run through all the matches, but there's one eye-catching potential match up there again because waiting for Gareth, or Gareth Potts is waiting for the winner of Tom Cousins and Dan Eaton-Lees and it was a potentially a Tom Cousins-Gareth Potts matchup in Pro Series 3. They could play again in Pro Series 4. Dan Eaton-Lees will have his say though. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's Gareth, you know, you don't buy a lottery ticket this weekend, Gareth, because <laughs> you've been, you've kind of, you've got a very tough draw there, potentially either, either player. But I guess that's the beauty of Ultimate Pool. There are no easy draws. No, there, there really aren't. And well, we've talked about the draw plenty of times, but um, you just have those runs, don't you, where you're getting tough, tough draws and you have to sort of suck it up and deal with it, I guess. Yeah, you've got a weather storm, you know, you, you're always, if you keep winning, you're going to run into a, a top class opponent. But, you know, for Gareth to draw somebody like Tom, um, in consecutive events, if he beats Danny and Lee's, I mean that is that's brutal. I mean it doesn't come much tougher than that. So uh, Gareth's going to be looking over his shoulder and thinking, why me? But you know he's professional. He's he's done it before. He's got the t-shirt. He's won the world titles, and uh, you, you you can't really see. Um, I can't really see Tom beating Gareth, but you never know. 
Yeah, well, I guess in, in those terms, it's relatively short races, so it'd be fascinating to see. But of course, he's got, Tom's well, got to get past his first round. Yeah, opponent exactly. First. I mean, again, you know, we talked about Dan playing. You know, you're on about brutal draws. Dan's drawed Sheppy in the first, in the pre, in the prelim in the first event, and draw Tom Cousins to to, to to potentially play Gareth in the second event. I it's mean, very tough, yeah. you're on about brutal draws, but I think we've got to kind of put things into context a little bit. You know, we're playing first to seven, first to eight, whatever it is. For, you know, first to six. And you know, if if we are talking about the, 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 the these Tom Cousins Gareth Potts matchups, which is a little bit kind of jumping the gun, but, considering yeah, sure. considering the opponents that uh, that the Tom's playing, but you probably look at that and probably think, you know, that they'd, they'd take they'd take a match apiece, wouldn't they? And, and they hope it's the one that's in the the Pro Series three as opposed to four, because obviously it carries the most uh, kind of prestige and, and 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 prize money, if you like. So you would think that. If you ask both players now, it'd be yeah. Well, I'll, I'll I'll take one, but I hope it's the one that obviously carries the more weight. You know what I mean? But um, well, I want to ask you both about that because the way the weekend set out, you you start on Friday, you play Pro Series three, and then Pro Series four, regardless of how you do on Pro Series three, is is there for you as well because there's more prize money in Pro Series three than there is four. But is it easy to reset and go again? Whether you is it easier to do if you win and get through to the semi-finals, or is it does it you know is it more pressure or if you've lost on the opening day to have to come back and try and do it in the in the fourth event to me it's all mindset if your mindset's right then it's just another tournament obviously the prize money's slightly different but you've got the same players so uh you've got to do the same job you've got to win the same amount of matches yes it's a little bit less prize money in the uh, second event but you know you've got to win it's all about winning the titles and I guess you guys are both in, in form and, and eyeing up another t title. That's what you're here for. Yeah, well, I think my view on that, I mean, obviously everybody's completely different. We're all different characters and we all see things differently. I think my kind of view on that is, you know, scheduling's key. You know, if you're if you're doing really well and you're winning in one event, when are you kind of getting your matches scheduled for the second event? Does it kind of, does it become uh, a positive where you're getting loads of table time does it become a hindrance where you don't get your preparation time in between events and and all these different things i i really think it comes down to character i, I think there's certain characters that can win both events and i think there's certain characters that are really unlikely to win both events and i think i i personally would be one of those that's unlikely to win both events because i don't know if i'm necessarily in that kind of place where I can go again after I've after I've won one of. I mean, Chris might feel differently or whatever. But well, I know you were ill in in Blackpool, but obviously winning on the the Saturday night, you had to come back first thing in the morning on the Sunday and play Shane Thompson in the second event. Mm -hmm. And whilst taking nothing away from Shane for beating you there because he played very very well, you openly admitted that you just didn't feel you quite had it on on the Sunday morning. Well, no, I mean because it, it, it you know you, you're basically resetting and going again, aren't you? And it, and it, I guess it comes down to what your goals are as an individual and what you're trying to achieve, what, what you think you're able of achieving on a weekend. And uh, and, and like I said, I, I, I think everybody's different with that. I just think, um, you know, me, me, me personally, I, I, I feel I feel like I'm, I'm coming here to play Pro Series 3 and Pro Series 4 is a bonus if, if, it, if it doesn't go so well in 3. But as again, Chris might see it completely differently. You know, it's everybody sees it different. Yeah, is your focus on you, you focusing just next match ahead then is that yeah, the, the just, mindset yeah it's just another event to me obviously like i said previous you, the prize money is bigger in the first event but you're up against the same guys yeah. you know and and if you can't get up for beating these you shouldn't be on the tour you shouldn't be playing you know my, my mindset is every day it's another event it's another tournament it's another match similar to it, it might be the nine ball you know with me playing nine ball because you have double elimination matches that sometimes go all the way through the whole event where if you lose early, you're a million to one to win the tournament. But sometimes you lose your first match and then you think, well, I've only got to win two more, then I'm back in the event. So even losing that first match doesn't make much difference. So I think that's helped my mindset when I, when I do play. Mm. And I, like I said, I just try and take each match as it comes and uh, try and beat every opponent that come up, I come up against. Yeah, and it's been working pretty well so far. I won't ask you guys to pick your potential winners from the pro series but i'm going to come over to you scott and put you under all the pressure here especially as you've got two of the big favorites sat next to this you this is absolutely <laughs> horrific what have you done to me um and no sitting on the fence no but it is virtually impossible it to is, pick yeah. a winner at ultimate pool um we you know we saw that last you know we've we've seen that where with you know stevie dempsey probably nobody would have seen him as a winner at this stage um i'm going to put my neck on the line though and i think that this weekend we're going to see the 
resurgence, and I'm sorry, lads, of Scott Gillespie this weekend. Oh, there you go. Is he going to win both? No. <laughs> Well, we will look forward to finding out, and of course, you can find out on ultimatepool.tv. And the, as the main focus will be on the Pro Series throughout the weekend, especially on days one and two, we will be turning our attention to the women and the challenges on Sunday in particular. So let's turn our attention to the women's now. We've got 80 women playing in this event. Last event in Blackpool was won by Harriet Haynes, and she'll come in as a big favourite here. We're also in the field because she's playing in both events in the Pro Series and the women's will be Emma Cunningham. What can we expect from, from the winning women's game this time round? Uh, Harriet is looking pretty formidable at the moment. I think that that's, you know, safe to say. Recently won a world championship, looked in unstoppable form in Blackpool. Emma's not going to like that. Emma is a born winner. Um, and, you know, she's had to carry the burden of the women's game for, you know, for quite a long time. Um, and for, for her to be doing what she's doing in the women's game. You've also got people like Deb, Deb Birchall there, multiple world champion. You've got Kerry Griffith. Obviously, she won the, the plate event uh, at, the, at the last tournament. There's a lot of strength and depth in that, in that women's game. I mean, it, it, it's a stronger field as we've ever seen in the women's Absolutely. game for me. We've got 80 women, but there's just potential winners up and down the draw. And slightly different format for the women, though. They're playing in group stages where the top two in the group go through to the main event and the bottom two go through to the plate. Do you like that as a format? Something different? Um, I think it favours the better player. I think it gives them more opportunity to get into the match because sometimes when you play your first match, you know, you're cold, you don't know how fast the table's playing, you don't, you don't know how it's breaking, the reaction on the cue ball. There's a lot of things that, you know, can be different from table to table. But, I mean, in all honesty, I, I can't see past Avi Ernst. I just think she's too mm. good. Are you feeling the same way? Um, kind of, yeah, but I'm, I'm, I'm maybe like kind of, you know, See, seeing maybe somebody, you know, come out the pack a little bit, you know, maybe somebody like maybe someone like Danielle Randall or something like that, you know, who's been putting some hours in, been practicing, um, you know, obviously got um, a, 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 a good tutor if you like, you know, in, in, in terms of in terms of John, and maybe just, and I'd like to see it if I'm if I'm being honest, and not not against any anybody in particular or whatever, but I'd just like to see. You know, somebody like Danielle, or or, or or somebody of a like that similar kind of, you know, scenario where somebody comes out the pack, and, and and gets that breakthrough win because, I think there are one or two, that are kind of in that position, where you're thinking if you can just get your win, if you can just break that sort of, little sort of situation that you find yourself in, then I can I can see you know you know, that player kicking on, do you know what I mean? And yeah. really sort of breaking into that top sort of section. And um, our, our person would, I'd, I'd, I'd like to see that, I think. I'd like to, I'd, I'd like to see that situation happen where we get a, a new player, somebody fresh. I'm using Danielle as an example, obviously, you know, because she, she puts a lot of time in, she tries hard and she, you know, she's trying, she's trying to do her bit. And um, just to, just to, just to kind of mix up the top of the ladies' game a little bit, I think I think for quite a while now we've seen the same kind of players and the same kind of you know whether it be Amy, whether it be Shaz, whether it be Barbara, whether it be Harriet, whether it be Emma, or and just but nice just to see somebody fresh in there and just 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 mix things mix things up a little bit. Danielle was very close last season to making her big breakthrough. She fell agonisingly short a couple of times. She's got the talent, she's got the ability, uh, and kind of watching her evolve over the course of the last year has been brilliant. And it would, I totally agree with you, it would be absolutely great to see somebody like Danielle or a few other players I can think of make the breakthrough. And this weekend could be that weekend. Do you think the fact that they're playing on a much bigger platform than arguably they've ever played on before, because, or anyone's played on before with Ultimate Pool, with the three big arenas, we've got the match clock, we've got the very short shot clock as well, the players that can adapt at the quickest, because it's going to be such a new experience for all of them, I think it's going to be massive to see which one can adapt the quickest. Yeah, and I think Danielle is the next best woman player. Um, I know she puts so many hours in and she's so dedicated, and obviously her boyfriend's a a world champion eight ball which helps it does help yeah. and, and I've never seen a woman put so many hours in as much as Danielle puts in so it's going to pay off eventually and going back to what Mick said about somebody coming out of the pack and eventually when they can get that one big win we saw it years ago with Jason Twist in the men's mm -hmm. I mean Jason used to get to the semis the quarters the final and he never won one and as soon as he won one the floodgates opened he won tournament after tournament after tournament two world championships in 
in three years and you know you couldn't stop him he was just winning everything yeah. winning breeds winning I guess uh, the confidence mm. from winning yeah it's confidence and I've seen it in multiple Q sports I saw it with Jason Shaw in nine ball he's he was close you know to the US Open so many individual events the international masters he was so close to winning so many big events but he never got over the line as soon as he did look at the guy now he's just a uh, it's phenomenal it's incredible to see isn't it so plenty for all the uh, all the women to play for a great event 80 of them playing in this competition and we'll be focusing on them come sunday afternoon where we'll be seeing plenty of action from their tournament another tournament we're going to see plenty of action from is the challenger series 288 players in that challenger series top 16 in the rankings get to join these guys in the pro series next year it's a complete shark tank. I mean, we can't even begin to try and pick winners from that event. I could name you. I could name you fifty or a hundred potential winners. You know, the standard in that Challenger series is absolutely unbelievable. I'm going to name check my uh, podcast host Dan Wells. I hope he goes deep this weekend. Um, his form so far has been quite embarrassing, <laughs> um, but no, the strength and depth in that Challenger series absolutely incredible. And it's so big just to win one event because you're virtually guaranteed to be a professional next season and the money involved for an amateur tour to have that level of cash involved a lot of pressure out there i mean they're playing tournaments for far more money than i've ever played for in the past you know we're not used to seeing that level of money in pro game let alone playing it in a, in a challenger series event it's, it's absolutely incredible of course neil Britton and josh corkett got their hands on the trophies in blackpool and they'll be one and two in the rankings and absolutely as you say they've got their really where they need to be going into potentially next year and getting their, their pro ranking. As to the top pros, do you keep quite a good eye on that Challenger series and, and see how things are going to go I think there? what tends to happen with with, with, with the overlap is, is um, if you see like kind of players with some pedigree that are from your local town or you've known them for a long time, so you know you talk to like, like Sir Neil Britton, I know, know Neil since he's been 12 or 13 years of age, you know. Um, so you, you, you watch that that kind of progress, and 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 and, and you know there's so many players that, that that play locally. There's Sam Bircher, there's Lee Washbrook. You know they're all they're, they're all playing. There's loads of different players. I mean, when you look at it, and you, even though it is a minefield, and we're not saying that it's not, but you're still sort of thinking to yourself, well, how much is Ben Flack playing? If he's putting some time in, you know, you, you eventually you'd have to think, well, yeah, you know, it's going to happen. You know, you look at Lee Kendall, you know, if Lee's put in any time in, you know, if uh, if Callum Singleton's put in any time in, you know, and, and there's one or two others, but certainly like there are, there are one or two that stand out, but of course you don't know, you know, life takes over, there's loads of different things, loads of different scenarios and you, you, you don't know who's doing what, particularly more in the challenge again, more in the, in, in the amateur game, you know, in the, in the programme you can, often make the assumption that everybody's kind of doing the same thing to a degree so it's a much easier kind of um, much easier thing to, 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 to choose who you think is going to win and, and, and who's going to do what whereas with the amateur game you're a little bit in the dark of who's who's doing what do you know what I mean who's so, feeling it that weekend yeah. and, and also the draw has a big effect and the fact that it's it's short races as well races to six you I guess you have to be mentally strong because we see it so often the standard is so high in the challenger series you could not get the opportunities you need and you have to be able to respond and go again for say challenger four yeah race to six is is really short um, but there is so many players and and I have to I have to agree with Mick I mean I mean Callum Singleton for me it's just a matter of time before he wins one of the series. I mean, for me, he stands out by a long, long way, and he's too good to be an amateur. I think there's a few players like Callum that you look at. There's a lot of players we think could get themselves in the top 16. I think Callum's one of the players we'd probably be surprised if he doesn't get in the top 16. But it is so tough with 288 players. It is tough, and it's it's a big leveler these days because the, in every sport the equipment gets better and things like that. But you look at the tables now, and me and Mick have discussed this before. The the cloth's better. It's faster. It's more responsive. The pockets play a little bit easier, the cues are better, the tips are better, you know, you've got brake cues now. So all in all, the, the equipment has become a little bit easier because everybody's getting used to it, everybody's getting used to the rules and it's only a matter of time for me before Callum wins one. Yeah, well, it'll be fascinating to see how that tournament unfolds and we'll be bringing you the back end of that tournament on Sunday afternoon. And to round off Sunday afternoon, we'll also have Pro Series for the conclusion. So we'll see the back end of that event as well. So you can get all that uh, content, all that, all those tournaments, all those matches on ultimatepool.tv, 699 
But as well as the, the tournament we've got coming on this weekend, there is an awful lot of content coming on the website as well and on the app that's uh, going to be launched soon. There's going to be lots of coaching, uh, lots of back catalogue. There's an awful lot on there, Scott, isn't there? Yeah, there is. And, you know, we were lucky enough to record a career retrospective interview with Mick Hill. We're not going to tell you how many hours it went, but it was a, it was a lot of it. It's <laughs> potentially a two or three parter. We've recorded some content with Chris today. There's going to be a lot of exciting content coming in, stuff that kind of people haven't seen before done in the game of pool. We, we're trying to do the game the service it deserves because it's a massive game. We love it but we do think that there's a lot more that can be done from a content perspective. Yeah, I think part of that content, part of the stuff I'm really looking forward to seeing is some of the coaching content we're out there. We've got the masterclass with, with Gaz, we've got masterclasses with these guys on the way as well. If you want to improve yourself as a pool player, then it's going to be a great place to start because there's going to be so much that you can learn from and try and improve yourself as a player. Have you guys enjoyed getting involved and, and putting some of that together? Yeah, it's really good to give something back. Obviously, we've, we've, we've been playing a long, long time and you know who knows how long we might keep playing, but we try to win every event we go in and I like to try and help people as well and you know people might say you know it's it's 6.99 what are we getting and things like that but it's things that will cost you an absolute fortune it's taken me 20 years to learn the things yeah. that I've learned and you could probably learn that in a month by watching the app and watching Mick and, and Gareth and believe it or not the difference between winning and losing could be knowing that knowledge of what we're showing you. And that knowledge is fascinating. For me, as a, as a former player, I just sit there and I watch some of that stuff and I absolutely love it. I mean, some of my favourite moments with you guys is when you've been just around the table discussing different ideas, different things here and there. Um, and I'm fortunate position to get to see that and to see your knowledge come out. And now we're putting that on camera and putting that out for people to see. For me, it, it's absolutely fascinating. Have you, you enjoyed it as well? Yeah, no, just to, just to reiterate what, you know, what Chris has said, you know, I've, I've, I've enjoyed doing the, 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 the content stuff, you know, in terms of the coaching and, and, and the interviews and, uh, and all different things. And, and again, you know, like when, 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 when I was kind of in my teens, if, if, if I was you know, kind of learning the game or wanted any tips or anything, you had to kind of sit down and watch it. You had to be there. You know, and what what you'd kind of, you know, if Darren played, Keith Brewer or Lee Kendall played or Greg Farron played, you know, you'd you go and pull up a chair and watch the matches. You had to be there. You know, the the beauty of this is is that you know not only do you get to watch all the matches live and and all the different things, but you know you can now kind of almost like learn the game, you know, from from your armchair, which is which was never how it was. You know, it it, it it's a great luxury for for the particularly the youngsters as well these days. You know, to be able to to, to follow the likes of Chris and the likes of Gareth and pick up the different tips and stuff, it's, it, it's an amazing opportunity, you know? And I should mention, it's not just going to be those three. There's plenty of content coming from a lot of different players. We're getting a lot, a lot of different perspectives, but we've also got the back catalogues and a lot of different things, a lot of fun and, and a lot of different things coming along the way on, the, on there as well. So it's well worth the six ninety nine to uh, to get that and, and learn from it. But of course, you get the tournament this weekend as well. Well, you can watch all the action this weekend on ultimatepool.tv, Six ninety nine for all that coverage. There is plenty there to enjoy, so get that ordered up. Of course, if you are in the area, we're at the uh, Hilton Metropole in Birmingham, so come on down. It is free entry to come in and watch, where you can watch some of these great players in action. Uh, look forward to having your company.